What is Tiki Taka? Characterised by short passing, movement and working the ball through various channels, the Tiki Taka style also places a reliance on positional discipline and the understanding between the players, all helping to retain possession effectively and purposefully. The style involves roaming movement and positional interchange, moving the ball in intricate patterns and sharp one or two passing. Because the aim is to always be in possession, there isn't usually much defending needed to be done so the style can equally be effective defensively as much offensively. In possession, you want to stretch the opponents by making the pitch as wide as possible and when the ball is lost, the team narrows their shape in order to make the pitch seem very small for the opponents to play. Pep Guardiola, who claims his Barcelona side never used Tiki Taka, has been associated with this style of play since the beginning of his managerial career. He loved to create overloads on one side of the pitch to then exploit the weakened side and that theory is the one I will attempt to use for my Tiki Taka tactic. My name is RDF and in this video I will be giving you guys my Tiki Taka tactic. We also have the training schedules as well so if you are enjoying my content you already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, hit like on this video most importantly and you can leave a comment if you have any recommendations but now let's get stuck into things. From build up, the aim is to have a numerical advantage in front of the first line of the opposition's press. By having the defensive midfielder drop deep within the back line, we create a back three and in most cases, this will create a three versus two situation. If the opponents choose to press with three, due to the fullback staying relatively deep during the first stages of the build up and the use of a super keeper, the extra player, the numerical advantage is always on, helping us ease out of our first stage of build up. Therefore, the keeper being good with his feet is a must. On the ball, he must be willing to dribble out with it, inviting pressure to allow a player to find space now vacated by the defensive player. That space was not free before the keeper invited the press and one of the central midfielders can now look for space between the first and second line of pressure to receive the ball. Once the first line of the opposition's pressure is broken, the fullbacks will then advance down the flanks with both wingers inverting occupying the half space. The fullbacks in the system are key, they have a job to maintain the width during the 90 minutes. As mentioned in the image, to allow us to progress with the ball with fluidity, we'll place an emphasis on creating triangles throughout our structure. Within my Tiki Taka system, the idea of creating wide overloads means that these triangles on the side of the overloads are very important. We look to overload one side of the pitch to progress play. By encouraging the defending team to naturally shift over to defend that side of the pitch, we leave a player on the opposite side of the pitch unmarked for a quick switch of play. On the flanks, there's also an emphasis on rotations between the inverted winger, central midfielder and fullbacks. In the final third, we aim to create a 2-1-2-5 shape or a 2-3-5 with two centre backs, one defensive midfielder, two central midfielders and five attackers. To achieve this, the wingers must invert into central or half spaces to allow the full backs to make an overlapping run and join the line of attackers. The attackers will give us various options when in the final third. The striker will look to drop deep into the line of midfield at times when progressing to the final third. If the striker does drop deep, this allows for one of the inverted wingers to then move into the space vacated by the striker. With players roaming, rotating and operating between the lines is vital for us to have our tiki taka feel. Players in close proximity allows us to keep play intricate and enables us to keep a high tempo playing one or two touch passing. The striker dropping deep also plays an important role in allowing us to switch play when overloading to isolate. He must be disciplined with his positioning to allow us to use him as a constant option for switching play. Teams are likely to defend in a deep block against the Tiki Taka style, assuming teams using the style are technically superior. So the fullbacks are also key in breaking down teams. Due to the attackers being narrow, that will force the opponents to defend narrow, so the fullbacks will need to understand when to attack any spaces out wide left by the opposition's defence. In this system, they will look to run in behind from deep and get a cross or cut back to put into the box. Out of possession, we set our pressing trap or trigger out wide. 
Once the opponent's wing backs receive the ball, we'll begin our intense pressing to try and win the ball back. The purpose for trapping opponents out wide is so they cannot escape the pressure easily. For example, a right wing back cannot turn out wide to his right because of the touchline, effectively acting as an extra defender for us. If the right wing back looks inside, the pass has to be precise or risk losing the ball in a costly area. And lastly, we'll look at this image created by Eric Laurie, which you can find on Twitter, so make sure you go and follow him as well. His Twitter handle will be in the description, but you can also see it in the image. So for the advantages in the 4-3-3, which is the shape that we are using, three central midfielders enhances the ability of the team to control central areas and dominate the midfield. A holding number six allows fullbacks more attacking freedom. There's also natural creations of passing angles and offensive triangles. Three attacking players can pin back the opposition's fullbacks. It allows us to be fluid in system changes so we can change to a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-5-1 and flexibility in off-ball positional rotations in possession. For the disadvantages, we can concede space on the wings if wide players are not disciplined while out of possession, the lone striker can often become isolated, complex decision making and positional discipline required by the midfield trio, vulnerability in defensive transitions if number 6 gets pulled out of position and lastly potential lack of options in opposition penalty area if wingers stay wide and attacking mids don't push forward. So that there wraps up this little description and analysis, we're now going to go into Football Manager, we're going to look at the tactic in a little bit more detailed, we're going to look at the results which was tested with two teams and then lastly we're going to look at the training schedules. So now let's head over to Football Manager. So here I'm currently in my save with Brentford in the championship but I do also have a full season tested with Leganes in the Segunda division over in Spain so I try to still use decent teams within a division but I try to not use the very best team and also the very best teams in the country so for example a Liverpool or a Barcelona I instead chose Brentford and Leganes. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through the team instructions, the player instructions, move on to the results and then the training schedules. For the team instructions, our mentality is on positive, the attacking width is set to fairly wide so we are kind of stretching the play but not too wide and we aren't too narrow either. For the approach play, we are going to focus down the left and down the right, this is a bid to try and create some overloads in wider areas and we are also going to play out from the defence which is vital when playing a tiki taka or a possession based style. The passing directness is much shorter so we are going to be retaining the possession but the tempo is slightly higher so we are going to try and get the ball from the defence to the attack fairly quickly by using one touch or two touch passing. In the final third we are going to be sending in whip crosses instead of low crosses which is what I usually go for and we are going to be working the ball into the box. If you want more possession you can simply use dribble less though you can be taking away some effectiveness in attack. In transition when the possession has been lost we are going to counter press to try and regain the possession as quickly as possible but when the possession has been won we are neither looking to counter or hold shape. I feel by leaving it off we can semi do both so we aren't necessarily going to counter as soon as the ball is won but if the option is there I believe the team will do so and also because we are retaining the possession I don't feel that we'd need it to hold our shape either because players are going to be roaming around looking to collect the ball from each other. When the goalkeeper is in possession the only instruction that he has is to take short kicks. For out of possession now we are using a much higher line of engagement which can be dropped to higher when you are playing against the lesser sides. Sometimes it does work because you are easing off your press and that can invite a very defensive team or a very deep team to bring the ball out a little. We are also using a higher defence line, we are using a narrow defensive width and offside trap. For the pressing intensity we are using more urgent and we are going to be preventing the short goalkeeper distribution. So now for the player roles for the sweeper keeper, he's a sweeper keeper under attack, you can see that he is going to dribble more once the ball is at his feet, so like I said in the little description analysis bit, I want our keeper to bring the ball out inviting pressure because then that can create space for our players to then occupy themselves and of course our goalkeeper can find a simple pass. In central defence we are using two ball playing defenders, they are instructed to pass it shorter and dribble more 
both fullbacks on either flanks or wingbacks under automatic duty. They are instructed to take more risk, cross less often, cross from the byline, cross aim at the far post and mark tighter. In defensive midfield, we are using a deep line playmaker. He's instructed to pass it shorter. An advanced playmaker on the attack is also part of the midfield trio. He's instructed to run from his position and then lastly to make up the midfield trio is the box to box midfielder. He's going to be passing it shorter and also moving into the channels helping out our attackers in stretching the opponent's defence. For the attacking trio, on the left side we have an inverted winger on the support duty. He's going to take more risks, cross aim at the far post, get further forward, close down more which is going to help with our pressing trap and also mark tighter. On the right side the inverted winger has similar instructions but also slightly different because I don't want the two wingers to actually do the exact same things. So the one on the right is going to cross aim at the far post, he's going to sit more narrow and be more a part of the play, he's going to also close down more and mark tighter. Lastly up top in the middle we are using a deep line forward who is instructed to dribble more, shoot more often and close down more. So that there wraps up the tactic, we are now going to check the results. So like I said in a while back, this little Brentford career of mine is actually in the middle of the season and you can see in the championship that we are second place, we've won 23, we've drawn 10 which is kind of a lot and we've also lost 2. At the moment we're just 2 points behind the league leaders Norwich. But most importantly for the statistics, you can see that we've scored the most goals at the moment with 60 goals, we've had the most shots for, we've had the fewest shots against so defensively we're doing very very well. But most importantly what we want to look at is the pass completion ratio, the possession and the passes completed. For the best pass completion we've actually topped that table with 91% and for the most possession again we are topping the table with 60% of the ball. With the passes completed you can see on the right hand side here we have completed 17,627 passes which it's a lot and at the moment the games without losing we've got 19 games without losing using this tiki taka style. So as you can see here for the passes completed we top that table, pass completion ratio we top that table but also for clear cut chances created we've also created the most clear cut chances in the league. We have the best crossing in the league as well when it comes to the completion ratio but we also have completed the most crosses so effectively going forward this tactic is very very good. And lastly before we switch to Leganes, expected goals for Brentford also topped that table with 69.51 expected goals for. But we're now going to load up the Leganes save where I've completed a full season in the Segunda Division. So for Leganes who are a fairly decent team in Segunda I believe we are predicted to finish 3rd if I go and check that. Yeah we were predicted to finish 3rd at the beginning of the season, we ended up winning the league by far as well ending the table with 101 points. We had the most goals in the league, we have the best defence in the league so similar stats to what we was achieving at Brentford. So if we go to the competitions the La Liga Smart Bank, you can see that we played 42, we won 31, we drew 8 only losing 3. So with Brentford we actually managed to draw more games already and that season isn't finished. Given in the championship there are some very very good size but we are going to check the stats now for the average possession you can see that Lagan has topped that table with 63% so we are averaging more possession than we did at Brentford. For the goals we scored the most goals 82 goals within the league. For the expected goals for we didn't top that table Mallorca did top that table we came in second with 64.01. We had the most penalties in La Liga so we were in the opposition's penalty box fairly a lot. But most importantly, we want to look at the passing statistics. So Lagana's had a 92 pass completion ratio. We completed 26,627 passes in La Liga Smart Bank, which you can see is a lot because when you compare it with the team that came in second, I mean, there's really no comparison whatsoever. For the clear cut chances created though, we did come in fifth. For the shots four, we came in second behind Maloka, who are a very good team. Shots on target, we did top that table as well. And for the fouls against us, we topped that table. Defensively, we conceded the least with 29. We had the best expected goals against ratio as well. Well, you can see that we were bottom of that table with 21.84. Conceding from corners, we only conceded two, but that's not very important. And for the clean sheets, we had 26 clean sheets. 
Now for the player statistics, Robert Ibanez was a top goal scorer. He was also the top goal scorer in the league with 20 goals. He was our inverted winger on the left side and the left sided inverted winger for some reason manages to score so many goals. It's the same at Brentford. Marcus Falls, I believe his name is, he's the top goal scorer currently at Brentford and he's playing as the left inverted winger. For the top assist, Robert Abanez is there as well with 12 assists. Our central midfielder and our right back is also on the list with 12 and 10 respectively. For the most key passes, we don't actually have anybody in that stat there. And for the pass completion, we have many players in that stat. We actually have four players in the top eight. For the most dribbles made, Robert Abana, so clearly he was a very, very good player in this league. And for the most clean sheets, you can see that our 37 year old goalkeeper kept 24 clean sheets throughout the season. He only conceded 19 as well. But now, we're going to check the team report, the attacking efficiency, the defending efficiency and how we actually scored most of our goals. So for the team report for the attacking efficiency, you can see that we were both aggressive and clinical. We managed more shots per match than average and we are more clinical than a lot of other teams within the league. Defensively, we were very, very quiet and impenetrable. We faced fewer shots per game than average and we conceded fewer goals than would be expected from the number of shots that we faced. So defensively, we were very good by being quiet and impenetrable going forward. We were very aggressive and also clinical. For goal scoring though, how did we score most of our goals? 51 were from play shots, 12 from powerful shots and 12 from headers. With the assist, 18 came from through balls, 20 came from crosses, 11 came from free kicks, 8 coming from short passes and 3 from opposition mistakes. So that there is the team report and now we're going to switch back over to Brentford and we're just going to have a look at their team report as well. If you want to look at the top goal scorers in this Lugana side, here we are, Robert Mbarnas with 21, Kevin Bua with 16, Miguel de la Fuente with 15. I believe I pronounced that name right because it rolled off my tongue perfectly. Juan Munoz as well with 12. Ruben Pardo with 11. For the most assist, Robert Abanez, our winger with 15. Our central midfielder with 12 and our right back with 11. But now we're going to switch over to Brentford to check their team report. And then lastly, we're going to look at the training schedules used. So now back at beautiful Brentford, we can check their team report as well. For the attacking efficiency, we were aggressive but slightly wasteful this time. Laganas were very, very clinical. Brentford on the other hand, we are slightly wasteful in the attacking third. But we manage more shots per match than average and we are less clinical than a lot of teams within the league. For our defensive efficiency though, very similar to Lugana's now, we were very quiet and impenetrable. We faced fewer shots per game than average and again, we conceded fewer goals than would be expected from the number of shots that we have been faced with. When looking at how Brentford scored their goals, again, very similar to how Lugana scored their goals. 38 from play shots, 10 from headers, 5 from powerful shots and 5 from penalties. With the assist, 13 from through balls, 11 from crosses, 6 from corners, 3 from free kicks, 4 from short pass. But what has got to be most satisfying about this is now squared balls. Two of our goals were scored by squared balls. I believe at Lugana's, there wasn't any squared balled goals. Which is basically our wing backs going down the byline and pulling it back for a striker or inverted winger to put it in the back of the net. And when we look at Brentford's squad stats, again, very similar. Marcus Fors, our left inverted winger, he's our top goal scorer. He didn't create as much as our Lagana's left winger, but at the moment, he's still on three assists, scoring 18 goals. Ivan Tony, our main striker, has scored 15 goals in 26 games, which is very, very good for a deep line forward. And for the best assist in our team is Sergi Canos, of course, our right inverted winger. Brian Mbembo has also been very good coming in with eight assists. Rico Henry, our left wing back on five. Henrik Dow's guard with five as well, but these stats can all increase once the season is finished. We are only currently in March. But for the last bit of this video, we are now going to go to the training schedules to see the training schedules that I have been using. 
Now for the training, I did cop out a little bit. I just used my Pep Guardiola training schedules because I felt that that training schedule was very well tailored for this system. So on the Monday, it's match tactics, possession, team bonding. Tuesday, defending from the front, ball retention. Wednesday, defending, engage, chance creation, ball distribution. On the Thursday, attacking corners, teamwork, chance creation. Friday, attacking movement before the match on Saturday. And then Sunday, recovery and match review. When there's two matches during the week on the Monday, it's transitional press, chance creation and team bonding. Tuesday, attack and movement before the match on Wednesday. Thursday is all about recovery, match review and focusing on our ball distribution. On Friday, it's all about attack and movement before the match on Saturday. Lastly, on Sunday, it's all about recovery and match review. Unfortunately, that wraps up RDS Tiki Taka system, the 4 3 3 tactic on Football Manager 2021. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. Also, leave a comment if you have any recommendations or any feedback. A big shout out to all my Patreons, but also a big shout out to Eric Lory for allowing me to use his images. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. I will see you soon. Stay safe and peace out.